Hello. Hello, Saber. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I am fantastic. You're, you're uh, definitely keeping busy, aren't you? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> kind of an understatement. I won't keep you too long because I know you are uh, absolutely slant. I didn't realize you were in Europe till you said that, and then I saw your uh, Facebook. You're out there teaching, uh, oh, yeah. doing some training, and then uh, were you teaching some kids stuff too? Oh, no. It was this adorable little girl that she has. I think she has like a blog or a video channel or something, and she came and interviewed um, a few of the drivers oh, and like awesome. had us do a cute little like a Lego car challenge. It was really it was adorable. Oh, yeah, yeah absolutely. That's awesome there. So uh, uh, yeah. I guess uh, uh, are you pretty excited about the uh, Pro 2000 then? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, very, very excited and happy to have another chance at the at the road to Indy because obviously the first time it wasn't really great. Well, hey, hey, it happens so. there, but uh, you got a lot more experience behind your belt now. So, uh, yeah, yeah, that's true. We'll I think ahead. it was just hard because everyone I'd done so well in karting and people just kind of expect you to do well immediately. Right. But I'd never, you know, mostly for me, all my budget was spent just to get to the race. So I had no like testing outside of the race weekends. Gotcha. So it was really hard to kind of, a lot of people, you know, you, you have time to get acclimated to the car and get the testing in and get comfortable and then perform at the races. And it was just kind of for me, just like get to the race and try and do it all at that time. And sure. Was probably not the best to approach. Hey, no, that's, I mean, that's an interesting perspective, though. It's something you don't necessarily think of, you know what I'm saying? As, as far as kind of using that budget to just get to the race and stuff. That's because that's expensive. Yeah. I can only imagine. Oh, yeah. It's, it's a lot. It's a lot, unfortunately. But, uh, I mean, you had fantastic success, like you just said, in karting. Uh, what I saw was it was three world, three national titles. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. So that's an absolute huge feat. And I saw your dad is the one that got you into racing. Uh, it seems like everybody's asking you that. But I want to know, was it dad that pushed it onto you? Or were you over there begging dad, like, hey, dad, I got to get into this. Like, you did it. You got to let me do this now. Um, I mean, the way I remember, I was so, we were so young. Um, I have like, honestly, I have a picture of me and I was like maybe three months old and then my dad's got me sat on his motorcycle. That's <laughs> incredible. Running some vintage race. So it was like, I kind of was just, it's been normal for me to be around that since I was, since I was a kid. So um i knew like when my dad got us the motorcycle uh when we were super young we only rode it maybe a couple times and i was like i was excited but i was also i remember being nervous oh absolutely <laughs> and then um when he when he got you know when he was like all right we're gonna because he drove me around he had a shifter cart and he had sat me on his lap in a parking lot once and like drove me around a lap and I was like, oh, my gosh, that's so cool. And then he <laughs> ended up getting us our own carts. And I was, like, so excited when I got in mine. And I'm like, all right, let's go. And then didn't realize that you had to break for the corners. You did <laughs> so the same thing I, I did was, in karting. That's incredible. <laughs> yeah. I just took off. And I was like, all right, let's go. And then I spun out in, like, the first corner. And I, I remember I, like, scared myself. Yep. So then I kind of like was a, drove a bit slow for it took maybe a couple like a year or year and a half or two years until I like was like I would kind of I'm gradually get faster and faster but I definitely wasn't the fastest out there and then um uh but the classic story is like I was I was being teased by a young boy about oh I'm faster than you and I'm beating you and you're slow all this stuff and I remember going to my dad and just like breaking down in tears, and I was like, "I could win if I had a faster cart and blah blah blah." Because I I'd had a cart that was used to be my cousin's cart, and it actually it wasn't it couldn't have won the the class we were in anyways. Sure. So, I uh, he went and got the new cart, and then um, I went I, and I was like so excited about it, and like went out and started practicing in it, and it felt so fast, and I was like, "Oh my gosh, this is great!" And I was like was like obsessed with cleaning it and taking care of it and making sure you know I, at that age obviously i didn't know that much about what i was doing but i was like okay i gotta make sure the battery's plugged in like <laughs> charge it up for every session right just like little things that i could do and then i went out and i won my first race by like 10 seconds the, ne the next race so it was just kind of a very drastic change yeah it helps and build the confidence for sure doesn't it <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it does. That's so funny, though, that you say that about karting, because that's exactly my first experience. I, I didn't do nearly 
as much uh, when I was younger. But so I'm going around the first turn and it's a hairpin. And for some reason, I just hang it wide open. And dad just comes over when <laughs> when he's helping me out of there. And he's just dying laughing. He's like, man, you got a break. And I was like, yeah, I figured that out. So <laughs> pretty interesting uh, thing that we both had the uh, the same experience there. Uh, so on top yeah. of all your, your racing, I mean, you're a very intelligent woman. You have a, uh, a bachelor's in mechanical engineering. Am I correct? Yes, yes, I do. So that's absolutely incredible. And I was watching a, a video uh, on yourself. And, you know, you're, you're talking about how that really applies to obviously what you're doing and just helps you get that much more focused on the car and exactly what it does and everything. Yeah, I think it, it, I mean, it gives me a unique perspective. Um, I mean, but I don't think that you necessarily need to be an engineer, obviously, to be a racing mm. car driver. And right. in some ways, I definitely think that it it can almost be more difficult because then there's a lot sometimes i'll overthink things or be thinking about things that i necessarily maybe shouldn't be worried about especially just focusing on the driving aspect of it sure absolutely so it's been you know just trying to have the correct balance at you know given times like being like okay now i need to be this way and now i need to be this way but i think the analytical personality from the engineering side is actually i can use that sort of um process to to apply that to my driving so i think that really helps awesome so uh i i guess uh is is karting your favorite series of the past is that what uh you really found your love from and or, or do you like the uh the fw or pro 2000 series better um i think i mean i love karting because the amazing like close racing and it's so competitive and that is kind of like my first, more like my first love kind of thing. So I think I'll always really enjoy that. And I'm like shifter karting is, is hundred percent, like still to this day, like some of the highest competition, most I've been pushed. Like it's, it's just different and it's, I really enjoy it. So for me, like the KZ2 class or like the S1 in the States was, was great. Um, but I also like last year I loved, um, obviously, w series racing in the f3 cars because it was you know i had so, for once i had a full season to really focus on just my development as a driver rather than stressing out about like getting results to make sure i get enough funding to go through the next race so it was it was really uh, a good year for me and i really enjoyed like basically just learning all of the different components that really go into driving a car because i feel like when i first started a couple years ago that I didn't there was so much now that I'm like I didn't even realize existed or was even a factor in it until until I did W series last year. So I think it was um it was a great experience for me. Absolutely there and uh uh talking about the W series and everything like that, how do you prepare for a race like that? I mean, that's obviously a, a different uh stage than than karting was ever. And now you're on this huge stage here. Uh, you got every woman that is a fan in racing, their eyes are on this series. I mean, it's such a big series for women in racing. Um, and then you're you're part of it. So uh, how do you mentally prepare every time you get in that car, every time you're strapping those belts on? Um, I guess for not just W Series, but just car racing in general, there's a lot more, obviously, sim time involved because – it's not like karting where it's a lot easier to just go out and practice with the tracks and everything. So it's a lot more expensive too mm -hmm. to, to be able to get a test day. So if you can't, you know, getting seat time is great, but if you can't get the seat time going and doing sim days and practicing your qualifying, practicing your mental approach to things like that, getting used to being in that type of um, stimulated environment is really important as well as, you know, obviously training, it, phys being physically fit. Uh, I mean, obviously the, the, um, the strain on your neck is greater in, in higher, um, downforce cars mm -hmm. than it is in karting. So I think that's important, but a shifter cart is still crazy hard to drive, like phys very physically hard to drive. So I think it, even doing karting is great training for getting in a car. But um, obviously, there's like some more key stuff. So I've, I've really been working on growing my strength kind of overall. Even people don't really realize how much strength you have to have in your legs as well. 
um, to be able to reduce enough brake pressure. So physical training is really important, as well as like mental imagery training um, before race and when you get in the car before you go off the session. So when you step out of the car then and all that adrenaline is flowing, I mean, you got every emotion running through your body. How do you take down, how do you step down from that and, and get back into the real world feel of everything? Um, honestly, that, that is sometimes the harder, harder parts. I remember when I was a kid, I really, it was, it was hard because you go to this race weekend and you'd be, you know, you're very in kind of more in my element and enjoying it. And like, obviously under a lot of pressure and, all the stuff and then Monday morning go back to school <laughs> and it was right like, that was tough because I would always be quite I don't I wouldn't say depressed almost I was I was kind of depressed especially if it was like if it wasn't a great race race weekend then it was like man now I gotta go back to school and <laughs> right <laughs> but nowadays I guess um I've learned the importance of recovery so it's like obviously a lot of professional athletes talk about how recovery is just as important as the training sometimes Absolutely. so um, the day, you know, the day after the race, i usually, I mean, there's travel days and everything. And last year when I was working full time, it made it a bit harder to get the proper amount of rest. Um, definitely. But it's basically just making sure you have that downtime afterwards to kind of recover from the, from that really, you know, intense environment and then bring it and not like giving yourself too much rest though. Cause then I feel like you can get stuck kind of in that like okay i need to just i just want to keep sleeping so you right. kind of have to bring yourself up back up like soon enough and to be like okay let's just get in the gym you know the next day and start doing just some light cardio just to like eat because it's good for you to for your muscles and everything for recovery so it's just making sure that you balance those highs and lows very nice there that's uh i like the outlook there you are very you can just tell you have a very good knowledge and a very uh um racer attitude there as well i, I love it there so uh I've, you, were, you were talking about going to school a little off racing topic here what did you drive to school what was your car what's your daily driver oh uh my daily driver currently um it's it, it's not um it's not fast at all <laughs> but, um, which is kind of done on purpose because right i feel like i'm getting very big trouble Right, because, uh, but it's a it's a Toyota Rav Four, and honestly, it's great for me for the purpose I need because it's big enough to where when I'm moving around, like when I was moving back and forth from school or moving, you know, trying I'm trying to maybe move to Florida soon, and so it's great to be able to have enough space to to move my stuff. And then it's also you know I have a my dad well it's technically my dad's dog, and so I can throw him in the back of it and take him to the track or wherever. And I saw and he's it's also really good in the in the snow it's amazing oh yeah snow, so i saw the dog he's uh, very excited when you came home that time that was a oh a good yeah one. <laughs> <laughs> he gets very excited we have to make sure i kind of was hoping he wouldn't do it that time but we probably should have done that like outside <laughs> right to get <laughs> so excited well hey when you're traveling so much and, and that's your best friend right there he, he's a, he wants you home there he's excited so, uh, yeah, in, on your drive there in that RAV4, what are you listening to music wise? Um, honestly, that is such there. I have that's a really broad answer because I think I it depends on my mood on what I listen to. And because I could listen to anything from like calm classical music to like more like you know, early 2000 punk rock or like country, maybe sometimes or pop or. Ra I feel like I listened to rap more when I was a teenager, but not, not as much now. And then, like, because it's just, it really depends on what I'm feeling and what kind of almost what I need to have my mood state be going into something. <laughs> sure. Like, if I'm preparing to go somewhere or um, do an interview, like, even doing an interview or going into a meeting, or it, it just really depends. Do you ever uh, sing to yourself when you're in the track there or on the track there driving? Um, I don't know if I, I sometimes I'll sing to myself, I guess, if I'm like testing and it was more of a low pressure situation, I guess, but usually I, I don't really, I'll, I'll talk to myself <laughs> or yell at myself sometimes when I'm driving. But I mean, I, in the, like in my daily driver car, I sing all the time. So. Okay. <laughs> That's, I'm watching the, uh, the Formula One Drive to Survive that just came out last night. And uh, yeah. uh, the first season, you see Carlos Sainz, he's in the car, 
and they're like pulling him on the radio and he hits the radio button. He's over there just singing to these guys. So it's kind of an interesting uh, aspect to that. You're you're going 200 miles an hour and you're still able to sit there and sing a tune to yourself. That's pretty, pretty intense there. Yeah, so, I think, well, like, no, uh, obviously, um, Lando and Carlos are, they have a unique personalities and they like oh, yeah. to be funny and that type of thing and but the the actually the, the f1 radio is the way that they work so you don't have to push button it's just the, whenever they start speaking it starts okay <laughs> so they hear him all the time <laughs> yeah so like you can't you don't really have a choice even if you wanted to kind of keep it to yourself like they're gonna hear it no matter what <laughs> <laughs> right so i i didn't realize honestly the fw car it's you said it's the same as the uh the f3 there it's a so it's the regional F3 car. So the FIA F3 car is obviously has a bit more downforce. It's a little more, it's more expensive to run. I think maybe it has bigger tires. Um, obviously, a completely different engine, completely different aero package, completely different chassis. So it's it's like classified in the F3 level, but the FIA F3 cars are you know a little bit more advanced as machine the the regional cars are their idea behind them is they're more built for like more built for cost for like you know um you know they like formula w and or well i shouldn't say formula w sorry that's very incorrect <laughs> w series for w series i got you and i'm then, sorry that's me uh, saying that that i apologize i put no, that in your head there no it's okay it's it's easy to get confused and um, but yeah, the, for W Series, and then obviously they run it in like FIA, or sorry, the F3 um, Asia Championships, and then they run it, um, they had another F3 Regional Series in Europe previously that ran them, but, so that's kind of, um, it's just kind of the category that it's classified in. So out of the two cars that you're driving this year, between the W Series and the Pro 2000, do you have one that you're maybe more comfortable in, or maybe you like a little better? Um, if I'm honest, I, I really haven't, I've only driven the Indy Pro car one day. Oh, so okay. Okay. I have no, I, I, with the one day I've gotten out of it, it does, the Indy Pro car definitely has more straight line speed. The, uh, F3 car is, um, a bit like has more acceleration off the bottom end. Right. Um, than the Indy Pro car does, but the Indy Pro car also has way more aero. Um, you feel like you pull more, obviously more G-forces, especially on your neck and your shoulders going through, um, the fast corners. So it's, uh, and they, the, I think the, the brakes in the Indy Pro car is also, uh, a little bit better than, uh, than the F3 car as well. So Very it's, nice. uh, it's hit or miss. And I've, I, I honestly, I've driven, it, it really was like, I, I feel like I need more time, obviously, to sure. get the fascinated <laughs> to the Indy Pro car, but. Um, I think it's, they're both going to be great and they both are driven. I think there's going to be a little nuances where you're, you know, I have to drive something in a little bit more of a specific way. So I think, uh, it'll be good to have that challenge to go back and forth between the two and, and really work on being adaptable. Cause a lot of people look at it and they see, Hey, it's an open wheel car. It looks similar, but those two cars are probably so much different and it, oh, it really oh my God, so much different. helps you and kind of be a... size, like everything. I mean, everything is different. Nothing about, and not, not one part of that car is the same except for the fact <laughs> that they're both made by Tatis. <laughs> and Yeah, exactly. And they're open wheels. So that, there's your, your two <laughs> similar similarities there. That's, that's good there. So, um, do you have a preference? I mean, obviously you're going to go where, where, uh, um, the, the powers that be are going to really want you, if you will. Uh, but do you have a preference if, uh, uh, tomorrow IndyCar and Formula One, you had a, a contract on the table for both of them? Do you have a preference on where you go? Uh, I mean, I obviously, I wouldn't turn an opportunity down, but the, in the, obviously realistic wise, like I'm not going to F1. That's, that's not in my, that's not, that's not really a, there's not a high probability of that happening and that's fine. I'm like, I've accepted that and it's just, it is what it is. Um, but going to IndyCar is still like, it's so possible. Mm -hmm. So I think I would, obviously, I think in a maybe unrealistic world, if that was the case, obviously I'd love to try and go to F1, but the thing is, it's also very dependent on what car you have in F1. So it would be, I think maybe a hard choice because IndyCar has such great racing and it's very close, but I think I would probably, if I, in an unrealistic world, if I had to choose, I would probably go to F1 first 
and then I could I would go to IndyCar afterwards. Absolutely. Hey, there's nothing wrong with that, and I, I get it. So, I mean, <laughs> with that said, though, I mean, there I, I would imagine there's still an opportunity, at least for somebody, uh, uh, one of those F1 teams to call you and say, hey, we've got a, a test seat open, and we want you to be our uh, a test driver for us. I mean, is that an option for you in the future? I mean, if I get to that level, if I, you know, if I keep working on my development and, I, and I'm good enough, then I, there's definitely, that's, that is a possibility. Gotcha. And I saw you also, you wouldn't mind being an F1 uh, mechanical engineer there either, kind of working behind the scenes too. Is that correct? Yeah. I mean, so actually I, last year I did, I worked for Renault F1 in uh, suspension composite design. So I kind of sort of ticked that box and then. But I, my ultimate goal would be like to be a head for a race engineer for, nice. for for an F1 team. That'd be fantastic there. Uh, like I said, I'm watching the the documentary, and it really breaks into these guys and what they're doing because uh, we're not used to seeing that. I don't know if you've seen it before, if you saw the first season or not. <coughs> Excuse me there, but uh, oh yeah, it, it, it really yeah, watched, uh, breaks I into it religiously with my roommates last year. I think it's so. fantastic. Yeah, and the, the, I'm already on the fifth seat or fifth episode of the second season. It came out at three o'clock in the morning. So if that tells you what I've been oh, doing, wow. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So uh, <laughs> I, I'm I'm absolutely in love with this. But uh, uh, really, I don't want to keep you too much longer. As I know you're you are a very busy person. But uh, what would you say? Uh, I've got a five year old daughter. I'm a, a podcaster on racing. I love motorsports. What would you say to that five-year-old daughter of mine uh, looking up to a, a woman like yourself, as successful as you are? Um, it, it, it Don't take me the wrong way when I say this. I don't believe it like this, but unfortunately, a lot of people see it as a man's sport. Um, yeah, how, what do yeah. you say to, to my five-year-old daughter who wants to get in it but might have... Uh, doubts about it because of the just the appearance of it um i guess i would say that you shouldn't basically the only limitation if you think your gender is a limitation then it's going to be so basically the limitations that exist are the ones that you put on yourself and just because you think maybe there's more men in the sport doesn't mean that a woman can't do it. And you've, I mean, you can see that through examples that have happened in the past. There is women that have gotten there. And the biggest problem is, is it's not, it's hard for anybody to make it as a racing driver. And so I'm not saying it's necessarily harder for a man or a woman. I think obviously there are certain things that we have to deal with that men don't, but. Mm -hmm. It's the problem is that not enough, not as many girls start racing, so therefore not as many girls make it to to that level. Absolutely. So, I guess for someone that's you know young and is excited about the sport, you know, get into karting and and try that out at first because there's so many things that you can learn um, just by doing it that way, and it's and obviously it's more much more affordable at that level too. So <laughs> right. <laughs> getting into karting and then getting you know, it's a if you want to get into it and really get to that, you know, make it to F1, you have to have, at that age, you really have to have the family on board. The family has to understand what it's going to take to get them where they need to be by the time they're 16. Because as a child, you're not equipped really to know and understand what you need to be doing. Like, it's hard for you to plan that out for yourself. Sure, absolutely. So it becomes a family affair and you got to put the right people around you, get a good coach, get a good mentor, and just start doing everything and preparing like preparing like you're going to become a champion as early as you can and investing in yourself rather than because for me I was always like well I can't afford that I can't afford that and some in some ways I wish I would have like I can't afford it so I'll just do it myself I wish I would have invested more in letting you know having more professional great people around me sure. than trying to save the money by doing it myself because then you actually end up wasting time and losing money by trying to do too many things on your own that then that makes sense 100 percent there so uh uh just real quick there on top of that you, you were talking about sim racing do you do any i racing yourself I'm, I'm big on the i racing platform uh, not, I'll be honest, not really. I've tried to get into it a little bit, but if I do it, I usually only get on to just kind of look at a new track I'm going to. Sure. But even then, it's, uh, it's quite unrealistic. It, it, yeah, so absolutely. it's, it's hard for me to say, oh yeah, you should be out racing every day. <laughs> <laughs> right. Because like, yeah, there are some, maybe some like 
things you could learn from it, but the biggest problem is, is if it doesn't feel the same and, and obviously it's not going to be super accurate in some ways, especially like the car models or maybe the tracks aren't exactly correct. And if you start building up reference points and all this stuff for a track and you go to the track and it's even just Quite a little off, yeah. <laughs> you've been practicing for like days and days, then it's almost like harder in a way because you have to unlearn all those habits that you already created. So it's a great tool to use to an extent, but it, I don't think you it's necessarily something that you need to be <laughs> really obsessed with using, I guess. Sure. No, absolutely. I, I get that. I, I use it. I think it's one of the funnest games in the world, but that's how I use it. It's, it's a game to me. So I know some people yeah. put it out there as a, a top of the line thing, but it's nice to hear that from a, uh, a professional driver of your stature like that, just kind of uh, how you look at that as well. But uh, uh, I guess... Really, that is uh, pretty much what I have. The one thing I would like to say, though, is uh, just uh, one thing I, I saw again when I was uh, looking at some videos and things is you say, if there's one thing I want to do, when because everybody asks you about, you're, you're an IndyCar driver, you're a woman, you're always going to have that Danica Patrick name come up with you. <laughs> but the, the coolest thing I thought you said, and this was incredible, and I really hope you keep this mentality, is I don't want to be the next Danica Patrick I want to be the first me. So that is incredible. I love that. So please stick with that in your career. Is there anything else that uh, uh, you want to tell every, everybody listening about Saber Cook that they didn't know before? Uh, I mean, I feel like we've covered most of it, but I guess to anybody listening out there that wants to get involved in racing, I guess I just, I just want to say, you know, it, it's very worth it and it's a lot there's a lot of more components that you can learn through it rather than just being involved in a traditional sport because like i mean as you've seen there's engineering there's it's it's so mentally um challenging as well as physically so i think it's a great sport to get involved in and i hope more people could continue to do so especially young girls whether it be a driver engineer whatever and um yeah no, just it's going to be hard but should never give up and if you guys want to follow me on any of my journey you could go to um sabercookracing.com and then i'm on all the social media platforms as well as under sabercook or sabercook racing we'll get all that out for everybody to uh to follow there thank you so much saber for uh taking some time with me today i hope i didn't take too much of your time here um i know no, you are no. extremely busy Not and uh I, I, you're going to come to Indy for the pro, uh, 2000 and that, uh, the, uh, Indy the, for the, uh, road course race there. So, uh, hopefully we can, uh, maybe meet up there at the track as I live at that track in May. So hopefully I get to meet you there and, uh, get to say, Hey, and put a face to the name there. Yes, we'll definitely make time to meet up and, uh, I look forward to being there. Sounds good. Well, good luck in the, uh, the year coming forward is, uh, like I said, you've got an extremely busy one. And uh, we will be watching you as that much better you doing that than me, because I don't know how you do it with sleep and time time changes and everything like that. You are a strong, independent woman from what I've seen. And uh, <laughs> you you uh, you're just a uh, a huge uh, success story out there for for every little girl and really any any young kid wanting to get into the sport. So thank you for what you're doing. You're doing a great job. And I really like the message you're portraying out there. Oh, thank, thank you. you. I really appreciate it. And thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. Again, we'll we'll get everything up there for you. And Saber, you have a good one and uh, be safe uh, heading back here to America when you, you come back here. Thank, thank you so much. much. Take care. All right. Bye. That was Saber Cook. Thank you so much. Everybody check out over there. We got the links posted on the, the page here. Saber Cook, an amazing woman, an amazing driver. We will be following her. We hope to see her in the Indianapolis 500 here in the near future. Again, this is Checkers and Wreckers. Howdy's at work, so I got to have all the fun today. What a blast that was. Saber Cook, an incredible woman, an incredible driver. Like I said, we'll be watching out for her coming up through the Indy Series and then driving in the W Series overseas, having some fun with that. So, Everybody, I hope you have a fantastic day. Take care.